Nikos. Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is another video breaking out another live stream. This is the second live stream from the Midnight Suns crew giving us in-depth gameplay. In this video we go over something a little bit different. We actually get to see the structure of the cards, how many cards can be in a deck in total. We get to look at Blades deck, which seems like it's kind of complete, a late game build of it, and we get to see a little bit of the deck of Ghost Rider. If you have not commented before, feel free to comment today. No pressure, but you can when you want to talk about something, we can talk about it below. In today's video, the topic that we want to talk about is who is your favorite Marvel superhero? Simple. And let's try to get some likes up in this video, so don't forget to hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's get right into the video. The unpredictable witch from the runways. So, we're going to talk about each of these characters, but to start with, I know we're going to kick off with Spidey. Right. Um, and to talk about uh, Spidey's, uh, what he's like in combat, he is great at distributing damage to multiple targets. Not, he's not like dealing massive damage to single targets, he's more about distributing the damage out there. Yep, and he's great at using the environment. So I'm opening it up with his chain strike here where when it's upgraded, you can actually hit four targets with it if each successive target is KO'd. Right, so so we are able to take out three minions at once and also minions, get some damage right? on this Hydra Marksman who I know is going to be a big threat. I also mentioned we're playing this on Heroic 2 difficulty today. Yeah, so now that's the difficulty story lot. difficulty. Nonsense. Yeah, I was watching Garth play last time, so we're definitely up in the challenge here, so we'll see how I do. Um, so, yeah, as you said, Spidey is the absolute best at using the environment. Right. He's got passives that benefit him from using the environment. He's got lots of abilities that benefit him when he uses the environmental. So you, right. when you bring him, you always want him kind of using all the environmental. So I just used Opportunist with Spidey, and that makes his next two environment attacks free to use, and it also boosts their damage. So that was I was able to use that, that explode that barrel and get a bunch of damage on there. So, all right, so let's see what so else I want to do. Just to jump in, Spider-Man is probably my favorite Marvel hero. Um, and you and about 700 million other people. <laughs> and an important thing to note here is that he will be available on all of our platform releases. Yes, very true. Yeah. All platforms, yep. Spidey's, Spidey's going to be there from day one. Yep. Very oh. excited to have him in the game. So what you did there is you used an area attack, right? From right, I knocked the down the topple. Yep, right. and the marksman was camouflaged, so they, they was concealed, but when you have a concealed enemy, you can still hit them with AOE and area attacks. And those force him to reveal himself. So force him to reveal himself. Now I can try, try to get some more damage on him, so let's go ahead and do that here with Ghost Rider. All right, so we finally get to use Ghost Rider. To talk about Ghost Rider at a high level, very, very, very powerful. Yes. Deals massive amounts of damage to area damage, he deals single target damage. Um, the thing about Ghost Rider though is that he's a little trickier to play because he also deals damage to himself a lot of times. There's a cost to the things he does. So he's kind of like the Dark Hunter branch. There is a cost right. to playing a lot of Ghost Rider's cards. And so when you do that, you just have to play him the right way. The benefit being, of course, he does massive amounts of damage. All right, so even though the marksman went concealed again, I'm gonna be able to take him out with this other topple trap here and Ghost Rider. And can we talk right. a little bit about our version of Ghost Rider and who he is? Yeah, so Robbie, there has been uh, a lot of Ghost Riders, um, some more famous than others. I think a lot of people know Johnny Blaze, of course, the original Ghost Rider, the Stump Rider. Um, I love Johnny Blaze. There's Danny Ketch. So Danny Ketch um, was the Ghost Rider in the early 90s. Um, Danny Ketch had a lot of the awesome powers. Um, Danny Ketch was Ghost Rider in the original Midnight Suns comic book. Um, and of course, those were two motorcycle riding Ghost Riders. We have Robbie Reyes. So Robbie Reyes is an awesome young guy from East LA. He drives a car, which, you know, um, which we have the I've ability I've got that there. ability in my hand. I'll see if I can, can get use the it. hair resin to play it. So, um, and, and Robbie Reyes has a lot of the same abilities. In our universe, Robbie Reyes has a lot of the same abilities as the other Ghost Riders. He is considered a spirit of vengeance. Um, and he's this really, really awesome character. And he has this real cool duality of personality. Oh, I think that's where you go. Um, he has this real duality of personality. He's this really nice, sunny California guy. And at the same time, he transforms into this demon-fueled spirit of vengeance when he's on the All right, side. so let's cap that off. We've got Hell Ride right here. Oh, yeah. I can pull off. One so. of my absolute favorite abilities. So to talk about how cool Ghost Rider is. You can see the Hell Ride itself. 
such a cool ability. Yeah, our... again, tons of damage, but the flip side to that, of course, is Joe. I just discarded my entire hand. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> you I discard did. your entire hand. Did, okay. And they did it with that, one card play left. So this is a, not smart. an elite okay. strategy, I think, that Joe's <laughs> pulling off here. Yeah, we'll see how it, we'll see how it pays we'll out. We'll see here. how this plays yeah. out. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. While, um, while Joe much. saves uh, his, his game here, a um, yeah. couple <laughs> questions that we have. So from Taco Martinez on YouTube, do we have any Go. DLCs planned after release? We do, we do, and we are going to talk about that all with a little bit more detail, probably towards the end of the stream, but we do. We have um, a, a season of DLC plan, which um, players can get um, as a package. They get that if they uh, order the legendary edition of the game. Uh, it has four heroes, and they all have their own story. It has its own unique story. They integrate into your game at any point. Um, amazing heroes, and we are excited to talk about that probably in just a few minutes. Yeah. All right, so the shield guard punched Wait Ghost Rider so hard and knocked <laughs> him back into a barrel, and I'm in trouble now. Okay, all right, we'll that's see. fine. Ghost Rider was just the strong damage dealer. All right, dealer. well now Nico is gonna shine here. Oh, this is cool, actually. So this is great. We're gonna show, so let's talk about Nico, right? So yeah. we didn't plan any of this, you know? No. So Nico, our third character, yes, I love right. Nico. Um, one of my favorite books ever written was the Runaways book. Runaways um, is fantastic. And so Nico, she has the staff of one, and she is a witch uh, with powers in her own right. In our game, what that means uh, is that her abilities are a little more unpredictable. They add a little bit of randomness, um, but the randomness is all triggered when the ability is drawn into your hand. So we right. have this effect called roulette, um, and we can see there, basically it means this card could do this thing, or it could do this thing, or it could do that thing, and you'll know once you actually draw that card into your hand what exactly it's going to do. But it'll do something different next time and something different next time after that. Um, so yeah, she is she is a really, really fun uh, hero. The other thing about Nico, very powerful support. Incredibly powerful. Probably the best heroism moderator or generator in the game, besides yep. maybe Doctor Strange. She's up there with him. Absolutely. All right, so she, depending so on the roulette of your card, she can also deal massive amounts of Right, damage. so this ability that I'm using, Swarm, actually has variable amounts of damage, which I think the one I just did was about a, a hundred, but I've got another copy in my hand that only dealt 52. So, so that was a pretty bad one. That's a good example. On the roulette. Right, but, ooh, Witchfire. Should, should I risk it? So Witchfire, so we, Nico also does What's have... What's her curse doing right now? Curse is stun. So that would also be pretty good okay. right now. Right. Although, I'm going to leave the shield guard. He's going to detonate on his turn and deal damage to this Hydra Elite. So okay. I just want to leave him okay. kind of where he is. All right. But I think I can stun I'll see. this Elite. You're fine, so. you're fine. You're we might be able to recover there this. There you go. And you, you, and mentioned, think... you mentioned that we upped the difficulty, Joe. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about difficulty in Midnight Suns, the options, all of that? Sure. I will, while so we Joe have... continues to... <laughs> no, we have, to... we have eight different difficulty levels. Um, increasing the difficulty um, will bump up both the health and the damage that enemies will deal to you in combat. Um, we also will change the amount of revives that you can use for your heroes. And I think at the very highest difficulty levels, the number of enemies that you'll face in a mission will also change. So highest difficulties when you get up to ultimate two, ultimate yep. three, I think there are more reinforcements will come in. That's right. So it gets very, very challenging. So this is kind of a mid-tier difficulty that we're playing on right now. Uh, Hero two. So. Hero two. It's, Hero three is probably my favorite to play on, which I think feels, if. If I could make a comparison, it feels like classic or commander from the X-Men difficulties. It's right. challenging, um, but manageable. But you get up to ultimate, and it's, it's ultimate. All right. All right, so we've revived Ghost Rider. Yep, I use one of my revived cards. I think I might only have one. Oh, card. look at that. That, that was, was a great combo. So there's an upgrade you can unlock for your heroes later in the game where, at the start, if you knock back an enemy into a hero, both the enemy and the hero will take damage. But now that I'm later in the game, I have an upgrade that lets me, um, that lets the heroes react with a counterattack of their own when you knock an enemy back into them, and which is extremely powerful. And that's actually cool. a Spider-Man research project. That is a Spider-Man research project, yep. So one question about Nico um, from King Greek 111 on Twitch. How difficult was it creating Nico, the best character in the game, and her <laughs> play style, and were there any issues in her development? Well, sure. Because because I think that if you if you really know Nico, you know that her staff of one, so 
narratively, um, in the 616, the comics universe, the staff of one, the way it works is that she can only cast a single spell one, one time, time, right? Yes. And so she can say, if she says, you know, fire, be gone, she can only do that one time. The staff of one will not do it again. Or so, it will do something, but will have very unpredictable results. Yes, very unpredictable effects. results. Um, so, and for that reason, the comic, she like knows a bunch of languages because that's a way around it, you know? Um, there are loopholes, of course. But for us, what we decided to do then was say, well, she's a powerful spellcaster in her own right. We're going to take that unpredictability from the staff of one, and we're going to bring it over into her gameplay. Yep. Um, and so we, and again, it was really fun. Once we, once we realized we were going to do that, it was fun because we don't have unpredictability in this game. That's not right. really anything that's featured anywhere else. And so it's fun for Nico. We can push her above the power curve, but at the same time, we say, well, she's unpredictable, right? So right. Um, it was a fun design challenge to figure out how we could work in her unpredictability, but still yeah. stick to our rule of, you know, when you have cards in your hand and you understand what they're, you always understand what their effect is going to be. She's the one character that pushes outside that. This is a great example ability of that Witchfire will target random enemies on the board. It deals a ton of damage, but and if it happens to KO an enemy, she'll recast it again. I'm gonna kind of, I can, this is a situation where there's only one enemy left, so Oh, I but know, it's such an awesome ability. Oh yeah, so like, but so, yeah, so we can watch her use this. Um, but if you can kind of manipulate, if you know the state of your board really well, then you can use it to, you know, to great effect. And I would call out the animators and the job they did on yeah. her animations, they are phenomenal. She yeah. looks, Fantastic. Yeah. So, alright. Not too before one oh, star. No. Probably because no. the, yeah, yeah, the Ghost Rider got KO'd, so I lost some points there. But, pretty good overall. Yep. Okay. Alright, so we're currently looking at a screen that's going to be the breakdown of Blade's deck. They're going to go into depth about this. There's some things I wanted to talk about first before I throw it back to the team. And let the team talk. As you can see, for deck requirements, uh, you must have eight abilities. You need at least one attack, one skill, and one heroic card. And as you can see over here, there's a lot of different ability stacks and modifiers. We're nothing here, they're called modifiers in this game with a mark and a counter and a life steal. And there you can filter it by rarity and by type. And on the left hand side, this looks like this is attack, his defense, and his heroics that Blade currently have or his support cards. I think the shields mean support cards. So there's attack cards. His, so these are all the cards he currently has available in general. Now throw it back to the team and let them go in more depth. Want? Uh, right. So this Blade? is Blade's deck. Okay. So let's see what we've got. So his deck, he's got a bunch of modded cards already. So every ability in the game starts out with this kind of base version, which Jake and Garth were showing a couple weeks ago. You can upgrade them, which is a kind of a preset mechanic or preset. Um, like we've determined what the upgrade is for every ability. So you always upgrade in the same way. But then you can also add mods to cards, and these are randomized. So all the cards in the game can have a pool, they have a pool of random mods you can pull from. So for example, this very version of Quick Strike has apply one marked attached to it as a mod. That's interesting. So, but the one in my deck, let's see, this already has on KO, draw a blade card. That's really good, especially for a quick ability, which I know I'm gonna be using to KO enemies. But let's see, I think, all right, so stake is kind of a common ability. Let's swap that out for Savage. We did get a quick question. Um, from uh, from the stream, how many cards can you have for each character? So every every hero goes into combat with eight cards, right? Eight yep. abilities. Um, right. And there's some rules about them, but they're really, you can really mix and match from a lot of different abilities for the heroes, especially ones to become modded. Depending on what kind of hero, how you want that hero to play, do they want to deal more damage, do you want it to be a little more supporty? So they all right. bring eight abilities into combat, and then, they have some additional abilities. And what we see here, actually, is we see that we're bringing in two combo combat cards. Right. And oh, that's right. because we have, we have so much cards. friendship among all of our heroes in the Abbey that there's going to start generating these combo cards, which will show up. Uh, yep. Deck. Right. And, and so to unlock that armor and their legendary abilities, which hopefully we'll see um, in this uh, tactical mission, um, you have to be at maximum friendship with the hunter, and then you have to complete a challenge mission to unlock that. So. There's a lot of cool things that, that go into that. I want to oh, I want to make sure we talk about um, the fact that this is the first time we're really showing off a, a pretty big number of Hydra enemies in our live stream. Well, these are the Lilin enemies, actually. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. So, yeah, the so Lilin, the... this is this mission now looks like it has a full demon lineup. So this is again later in the game, the Earth is starting to become overrun by Lilin and these demonic monsters. 
that we now ha that the heroes now have to contend with. So we've got a Lillian Guardian back here protecting one of these two devices that I need to destroy. Super strong over dude here who shields we, stuff. Yep. Over here we've got a Dark Legion, which now let's our, just wait until you see. We'll wait until we see what they does. do, but I think our XCOM fans will will recognize yeah. the Dark Legion. All right. So let's get started off with cap here, try to take out some of these right. minions, and we'll be off and running. Right, so these are the shadow hounds. They, they tend to focus their attacks on one target at right. all times. And if you try to taunt them, they will all be taunted. So they're kind of a unified front in that regard. So cap's got this great spang ability where if its enemy is targeting him, it'll deal more damage, and that's great for cap because he's always taunting enemies. He wants the attention to be on himself. So, oh, okay, I just spent my hair Let's, all right, let's just prep this turn. Yeah, so yeah. Cap, we've had him before. Cap is a great support hero, right? He's great at defending, but he can also be, this This goes to the abilities you bring into combat. You get to choose what those are. Cap can be a massive offensive juggernaut, right. or he can be a much more supporting defensive or anywhere in between those two. So I'm trying to get this other elite Shadowhound next to the explosive, so then I can set that off. So last week we played with one of Jake's favorite characters, Magic. Uh, Joe, what would you say is your favorite character in our lineup? Ooh, I really like Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. I, I think his abilities get very kind of meta and interesting and weird. And Joe um, designed them. And I am biased <laughs> because I also designed his abilities. To be fair, I designed Magic, but, so that's, that's... Yeah, fair. we're biased, but, um, but no, I, I also really love Cap. Um, Cap has always been one of my favorite heroes, so he's, he's very fun to play with. Okay, I think... Out, out of stuff I can do this turn, so let's. Yeah, oh, I did have a, I did have a card play. All right, well. Jill, I love this. Here. You I are, know. I'm you just making it even your harder own for difficulty. myself here. You are yeah. Up in your own difficulty. I oh, like that. Okay. I need to use my skills. Generate right, my uh, So this so. is. Ugh, this is what makes the garden so difficult. Oh come on! You've <laughs> got to be kidding me. So okay. this. So. <laughs> This is good. We can talk. Oh, oh my gosh, we got a lot. Oh my gosh, you are in trouble. Actually, I. Okay, let me. T there's a couple <laughs> things that happen here that I need to talk about. Yeah. Right? All right. Let's take a moment here. Um, a couple <laughs> things happened on the AI turn that made this turn into a very, very, very difficult mission. So, wow. first of all, oh my gosh. <laughs> so first of all, um, we see Sabretooth has entered the mission. Right. So this can happen. Any of the fallen enemies, any of the villains in the game. Um, can enter these general missions as a reinforcement. They can surprise oh. you. It doesn't happen that often, but it does they happen sometimes. They can show up randomly. And then and they're, they're an incredibly difficult enemy when they show up, and now you've got to face off against the Fallen. And Sabretooth, you're going to see why he's so difficult. Um, and then what we saw was the Dark Legion has the ability to clone um, its allies. And it happened to choose to clone the most the difficult ally enemy on the, map, on the this Guardian. Map right now, the Guardian who is blocking the objective that I need to. Right. So, hit. good luck, Joe. Yeah. I have not seen this mission play out. I, I swear uh, to you. So, we will see how this uh, we will see how this goes. Again, All right. So, here's one of Captain America's Cap's one of his epic abilities, so you'll unlock yeah. it later in the game, but I love the name. I, I still smile every time I remember you coming up with a Brooklyn the handshake. Brooklyn handshake. The Brooklyn handshake. Okay, I we, we do have a quick question from Twitch, from Synchro Champ. Okay. Um, Hydra. Joe, take some time. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Collect like, yourself here. Yep, yeah, can go you for talk it. about how many villain or villain factions are in the game? Um, yes. Uh, I'm not sure we should. Um, really, there's two big villain factions. Um, villains are something else. Um, there are... I want to say four, five, five, six. six? I don't know. There are a lot of characters. There are a lot. There are a lot of characters. Not all the characters in the game are will fight you in combat. That will will still show up in the story. Um, right. But I I know we have at least four fallen. There are definitely four fallen. Villains. So five villains. And, yep. And and Sabretooth here actually has two forms. So Sabretooth right. appears as a villain. And then he appears in this later game mission. He has now become, become corrupted. So you're going to fight him uncorrupted and corrupted. And lucky enough for Joe, the corrupted version of Sabretooth is much tougher. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. And then we do have another. There's really two types of enemies. There's, there's Hydra. There's Lilin. 
Um, they have some variation between them. And then there's a third type of enemy, which we haven't shown, but I wouldn't call them a full faction, really. But they're, they're an interesting enemy right. that you get to fight. They're very, very different. They, they fight very different from Hydra or Berlin. Right. So the interesting thing about Sabretooth is he has frenzy, which means that he all the does, time. All the time. His permanent frenzy, frenzy, which means that he is not going to act on the AI turn. He will act after I play a certain number of cards. So right now, I've got two card plays left before he takes an action. So we should say, Joe, we just fixed an exploit with this, didn't we? We did. We did. Where yeah. if, if he was the only enemy left on the map, you could just end your turn forever and he would never take any action. And we were like, so, hey, wait a like, minute. Like, that's probably not good. <laughs> so we'll we make just, him we just fixed it. take an attack. Or yeah, he'll actually attack at some point. So he can be very dangerous if you don't handle him correctly because he will just keep hitting you every two actions every time you, you try to do, do things. Okay, I think... So what we've got here is we've got a Dark Legion. That's full right. up. We've got two Guardians. The one Guardian's pretty weak, though, so I think I'll be able to take them out. Ooh, that's oh, that's not cap. good. So, and also, this is Heroic 3, so they're going to deal a ton of damage when they hit me. A ton. Oh, and Wounded yeah. is okay. such a bad status effect. So okay. Wounded, what that means is that when a hero is wounded, or an enemy is wounded, oh boy. Oh, no. All right, the Dark Legion just happens so to clone himself. So the other thing the Dark Legions do is clone themselves, which they will also do every time you attack. Them. And by the way, those Which clones can then clone themselves, clone themselves and they can clone, clone their allies, people. and they, they can really get out of hand really, really quick. Yeah. Quick question about the wounded status. So we got a question from, from uh, Profiteer on Twitch. Is this going to be like XCOM, where injuries carry over from mission to mission? No. Status, S status effects do not. But a character can get injured if they take enough damage in combat, and then wait, you can always choose to bring an injured hero yep. onto combat but they will suffer some negative consequence for bringing them, they where to play they might start with um, some extra cards in their deck that can't be played, or they will start with less than their max HP, or start with a debuff. So there's some kind of negative modifier that comes from, that comes from that. Now, this is, so, and this is another, again, we're going deep in combat this time. This is a mechanic, the Drain Soul, if you could just highlight that for a second. Yeah, absolutely. So some of our heroes have these, um, a hero we're gonna showcase later. These are abilities that build power over the course of the encounter. So Drain right. Soul is a good example. Of that. Every time you use Drain Soul, all Drain Souls are going to get more powerful. They're going to cost more, cost more heroism, but they're going to do more attacks every time. They're going to chain more every time. So I don't actually know what's going to happen here. So Drain Soul has lifesteal on it, which means that Ghost Rider should recover health for doing this, but he also has wounded. Which is going to be more. Which is going to happen first. I think if he has a lifesteal, he'll survive the wounded damage. Right, so what wounded uh, is, is that every time you use an ability, you okay. take damage. I did get the lifesteal first, so he's okay. Oh, no, but now Sabretooth is acting. <laughs> uh, but okay, okay, he's just charging up. Sabretooth, he's... All right, so Sabretooth's now doing his Fatal Fury charge up, which means that his next action is going to be particularly devastating. So I want to make sure that I, I think I can KO him. Right. Oh, it, it might not be enough. Let's see. All right. We'll take a, we'll take a chance here. Right. So this ability is quick, and we talked about those. Um, this okay. Ghost Rider ability is quick. So if you were to KO, ooh. Oh, right. Oh, because Lash deals, Lash deals damage to Ghost Rider. And right. he was wounded. And he was wounded. Right. So, and that's okay. Ghost Rider, right? He is, he is the highs and lows of. All right. Well, here we go. Let's get Blade in here. Okay. So, so we shove. Blade's going to be able to take out Sabretooth, so we'll stop his Fatal Fury attack. So Sabretooth should now be taken care of. Nice. The interesting so, thing about the Guardians, of course, whenever they take damage, they're immediately taunted, right? All right. So Sabretooth ran away. So we've at least gotten him taken care of. Now I just need to somehow survive with Blade and Cap here and probably revive Ghost Rider. Let's see. A couple of questions. Uh, now, Joe, yeah. we were looking at the um, the end of the mission menu on your last uh, mission, and you only got one star. You know, not not to right. remind everyone. But um, how, thanks, how, Rachel. Yeah, no problem. How are mission stars calculated? They are calculated based on how many turns it takes you to beat the mission, how many um, if any of your heroes are KO'd. If you do things like if you fight a villain, you'll get extra ratings. Generally, it's mostly based on how long it takes you to yeah. finish the encounter. Yep, yep, it's, it's, it's exactly what Joe said. If you face a villain or if you get KO'd, then you're positive or negative. Right. It's just, just basically a par, a mission par for turns. 
And then, of course, those star ratings translate to the gloss you receive, which is our cosmetic um, resource. Oh, okay. Question from David Riley on YouTube. Do all characters gain XP after a mission, or just the ones that you bring? Just the characters that you bring on the mission, and they gain XP from playing their abilities. But we do have a system where if you're, um, all the heroes will, will slowly level up to stay close to the hunter's level. So we know the hunter is a character most players you'll be using the most because they're required on all the story missions. So um, there's not a huge danger of any hero getting so far left behind that they become you know, inviable in combat. Yeah. But our missions also will adjust based on the squad that you bring. So the level should always be comparable to the heroes that, you, that you're taking on the mission. All right, so we got some more shout outs here. I think one of the Dark Legion split again. So corruption is similar is a uh, damage over time status effect that looks like um, it works similar to bleeding, but it looks like it is just being kind of spreading around the battlefield here. I do not have a lot of good options, so let's redraw some cards. So and and this actually goes to character makeup, right? Like True. Cap is down, right? Who is a more supporty character? Right? And so what we've got is Ghost Rider and then Blade, and Blade's loaded out with some heroic cards. And so we've gotten to a situation where we've got a lot of heroic cards in our um, hand. Um, and so it makes it tough. We've got to build up some heroism to, to play some of these. Right, so I think what I'm going to try here is Blade's Relentless deals more damage if a character's already damaged this turn. Oh, so isn't that helpful? Just using Shove on to knock the Shadowhound back, I can now uh, take him beautiful. out. So that is step in the right direction. Blade was moving to the <laughs> ah, This is a tough one, man. Uh, I will say, this okay. is a pretty tough one. I'm out of redraws. I don't... Okay, well, let's do this. I can get vulnerable applied to this device, so it will take more damage, and then I can use this special break mission card. So certain mission objectives will have unique um, cards that appear on it directly related to the objective to help you complete it. So this break card is very good on this objective, and because now I just applied vulnerable to the device, it's gonna take even more damage. So that'll put us in a decent spot. Oh, perfect, so we actually took it completely out. So we've only got one device left. If Blade can survive, oh, I didn't even notice Cap got down. Cap got taken out too. Oh, we, were, we were just man. talking about gloss there for a second. You spent your revive already. I spent my revive oh, to get no. Ghost Rider back. Okay, well. So this is gonna be close. What we wanted to show is that um, on a hard mission, it can get really challenging. Yep. All right. I might. Okay. Let's so, see. quick question from from YouTube ooh, from ooh. Awesome Watt Will: Is there uh, cosmetic customization for characters, and if so, how do you unlock those cosmetics? Yeah. So, um, the, the let's talk about the hunter versus the heroes. Um, and in fact, all heroes, the hunter and the heroes, have what we call palettes. And what that means is that um, their suits, both their midnight sun suit that they wear. Um, or their um, base suit um, have a ton of different color options to them. And so you unlock those through a couple different ways, through friendship, interaction with that hero, so any sort of hangouts, if you have a good hangout with that hero, um, or if you level up your friendship with that hero, then that's gonna unlock new Abbey outfits for both of you to wear, or new color styles for your um, combat outfits. There are also chests around the Abbey grounds that you can unlock um, and then when you do that, sometimes cosmetic rewards come out of that. Um, so that's how you really spending a lot of time with the hero is probably the best way to get new cosmetic options for that hero. Yep. The hunter has tons of prop. They have all kind of. They have tons of different suits. They have tons of different color styles for those suits. They have tons of different props they can equip in the abbey. They can equip in combat. So um, and all of those um, cost gloss, but you'll have a lot of gloss over the course of the game um, that you can use to unlock those things. Gloss is a purely in-game resource and all those, all these cosmetic things I just talked about, they're purely in-game. There's no microtransactions to unlock those. Those are all just in-game unlocked with our game re resource gloss. How we doing, Joe? Not great. Okay. Not great. But okay. I just, I used the quick ability on a Dark Legion that did not actually KO them. So that was not fantastic. Okay. But, let's see. On redraw. Oh, okay. So the hunger has a mod on it. On redraw, gain conceal. Oh, Concealed that's such a good mod. Is extremely powerful because it means that none of the enemies are going to be able to attack, to attack Blade. How many are targeting Blade right now? All of them. Oh <laughs> he's the only hero that's left. Gosh, you are. And 
but he also has corrupted, which means he's going to take 60 damage at the end of the turn, and he's got five health left right now. So, so what would Savage do to Savage? our... Savage? So, all right, so Savage is actually really great for this mission because oh, it deals a ton of extra guardian for... Um, oh, boy. Oh. I guess we're restarting soon. All right. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Enterprise mission. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, do we... Can we have we'll get that taken off. Okay, yeah. We've got a mouse somewhere. All right, in the meantime, right. let's take some quick questions. Yeah, I can um, still kind of play Sorry about that, that, everyone. All right. Well, Grug16 on Twitch <laughs> is asking, is Midnight Suns played on a grid? No. It is not. And we're back in. Not. No, Midnight Suns is not played on a grid. Um, it's it's free movement, so you move your characters anywhere where they wouldn't have struck um, any other characters. That's important because... Instead of it being grid-based, it's more linear. So think about more like a game of pool where you're lining up shots and everything is a very linear, directed um, positioning. Positioning is incredibly important for abilities with knockback or for environmental attacks, but it's more of a linear, directional positioning and not anything that's tile or grid-based. Um, yeah, I don't think this is going to happen. Yeah, how you doing, Joe? Not good. So I used the Time hunger. to bring the old console command. I, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So this Dark Legion does have bleeding, okay. so playing the Hunger gives Blade some health back because okay. it's got it had a it's upgrade you gives have a shove? it life steal. I do have a shove still. Okay, so that is something. Can take both there those guys go. out. And th okay, well yeah. But how I, we doing? How we doing? What do we got? I don't have any redraws. I have no items to give me redraws. And do we? What do we have? What are we facing? Just one Dark Legion? It's uh no. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's a bunch of them left. Never mind. So okay. I think this is it. Well, let's let's great. see. How go. All right. Well, Blade, so on that Blade note, took bleeding. What happens when you lose a mission? Well, let's you see. <laughs> can either try to restart it, yep. or you can reload. Uh, reload and go back. We always Take do. We, have, we always have auto saves. In, auto, there's always an auto save in the Abbey before you start a mission. Right. So you can go back and pick a different one, or bring different heroes. Change it auto saves and tactical, right? You could go back to previous like turns and, right. and play, or you could yep. say, you know what? I'm going to bring different heroes on this mission, now, or I'm going to change my cards on this. Right, mission. especially now. All right. So as you can see, in the higher difficulty, it whew, you can kick your butt. Joe showed us that. Um, heard a lot about gloss and cosmetics and how they work deep dive on deck building how important synergy is on the higher difficulties Captain America is not was not generating heroic properly and this freaking Ghost Rider was pretty much just taking heroic so they found themselves in a deep deep issue the game is very complex and this is the second live stream yeah, it was a lot of fun I had a lot of fun watching it I've watched this around uh, how many times now so that's why I decided to make these live streams into videos, little keynotes for you guys, so you guys can get straight to combat, hear what they said about uh, the game when we were answering questions. So thank you all for watching this video. I'm gonna try to keep dropping new videos until the game comes out. So then I can uh, drop some more stuff when the game drops. As you know, I'm a huge fan, so I'm just waiting. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next video.